Hello, Melissa Dalmon for the Finance News Network. Joining me from Brainchip Holdings is Vice President of Worldwide Sales and Marketing, Rob Telson. Rob, nice to meet you and welcome to FNN. And Melissa, it's great to meet you as well and thank you very much for having me. It's great to have you. Brainchip has developed an edge AI processor called Akita. Could you break that down for our viewers to understand? The way that I like to look at it is um, there's this problem that's taking place that's going to continue to get become massive over the next three to five years. And that is what we call edge-based applications. And edge-based applications are anywhere from wearable devices such as watches to phones to tablets, all the way to electric vehicles and unmanned flying vehicles. And all of these applications are collecting data. And that data then needs to be processed. But right now that data is being processed in the cloud or in servers and data farms. And then all that processing that takes place is then delivered back to the device. And so this is a massive issue. This is a massive issue because the amount of devices that are being introduced on a daily basis is increasing at a dramatic rate. And so the internet bandwidth, we just take it for you know granted today, is actually um, gonna slow down if we don't adjust the way we do things. So we've developed a microprocessor that processes all this information on the device without having to go to the cloud. And that's Akita. And that's what we get really excited about. And we've done it in a way to mimic the brain, which is a little bit different than how things have been done currently um, with current um, AI architectures when it comes to uh, developing microprocessors. Thanks, Rob. What makes Brainship unique? Yeah, you know, I kind of just highlighted a little bit about um, uh, mimicking the brain. So just to take a step back, uh, if you think of it this way, most AI processors today are, are basically developed either as a GPU or they're developed as a, a DLA, a deep learning architecture. And so what we've done is we've developed ours using the neuromorphic design principles. And uh, that's a neuromorphic architecture. And as I said before, it, it, it allows the chip to function more like the brain. And when I say that, I want you to think about what you're doing right now. You're looking at me, you're listening to me, your hands are actually resting. I don't know if you've had breakfast or you had coffee or something like that. And so all these different senses are taking place within your, yourself right now, but your brain is using all of its energy to listen to every word that I'm saying, okay? It can determine where it wants to spend its energy. And that's how Akita is architected. While the other um, AI processors that exist today aren't designed that way. So they have to process everything at the exact same time. They have to process all this nonsense or um, non-important information in order to get to where they want to go. By doing that, they consume a lot of energy um, and it slows them down. So we're much more efficient in that environment. The second thing that makes us extremely unique and one of the things we're very proud of is that we focus on five sensory modalities kind of like I just said before, but those sensor modalities are vision or object detection, okay? Um, you've got um, auditory or listening. Uh, you've got touch or vibration. Uh, you've got a smell and you've got taste. And so we focus on those five sensor modalities and with the key to, you can process all these modalities all on one device. This is very unique and that allows us to be designed in to very small applications and then um, larger applications, which just need to consume very low power, such as an electric vehicle. Based on some of the recent announcements, it sounds like Brainship is the first company to commercialize a neuromorphic AI. Can you explain more about that? Um, there are a couple of companies, very large companies, that have developed neuromorphic-based solutions, uh, as at this point for research purposes, such as um, IBM and Intel. And then there are a lot of younger companies that are trying to develop some type of neuromorphic-based solution. But Brainship, uh, we're kind of ahead of the game. We've uh, developed our, our Akita processor. We've had it in, in testing and early access through some of our partners for like the, uh, about the last year. And so here we are with a production ready product, um, which we've commercialized. And um, we feel that we, you know, we're in a very good spot, um, you know, most likely a year to two years lead on other technologies that are being introduced in the neuromorphic space. And we started our commercialization process. We, we announced this uh, about a week ago um, where we are now uh, uh, selling 
um, development kits, and they're available to go ahead and purchase on our website, or you can contact sales at brainship.com. But those development kits are meant to enable uh, designers and developers to start working with the Akita environment and start to learn where they want to go and how they want to plan using Akita in their product moving forward, where they would come back to us to either um, purchase a silicon and volume from us or license our IP, which means they would design it into a chip itself or a system on a chip. What sorts of applications do you see Akita technology having the most impact in the short term? And in general, which industries will benefit the most from Akita? The great thing about Akita is it's broad, but I like to break it into four, four to five segments. And, and really we're focused on smart city, smart consumer, uh, smart health, smart home and smart transportation. We look at those applications and we see how Akita can impact the solutions by providing a very low power, a very efficient solution uh, in which companies can then build and scale upon uh, our ability to help them process the information they need to process. And what does the next two to three years look like for Brainchip? This is kind of funny because I just did a podcast which is going to get released uh, next week. And um, uh, my guest on the podcast brought up the fact that um, we are in a revolution. The, a the, the introduction of AI is a revolution. And he really emphasized this. And he's right. The last revolution we had was the internet. So put that into perspective, um, AI is, is going to be massive. The other thing we both agreed upon is, and I say this a lot, we are at the tip of the iceberg. This is going to be a ride. So when I look at the next two to three years, uh, what I see is, you know, Brainship growing as a company, um, scaling uh, to support our current and future customers' needs and the, the proliferation of Akita in a variety of different ways. Well, on that note, in regards to your podcast, one final fun question for me. You always end your podcast by asking people which superhero they would choose to be and what AR superpower they would choose to have. What would be your answers? Well, I'm conflicted, but uh, for the purpose of, of time and the purpose of uh, just this discussion, I'm going to stick with one, and that's going to be Superman. So I think the ability to fly and move at a very fast rate would be really cool, uh, especially because I can't wait to, to get down under and start having these discussions in person with a lot of our investors and shareholders and, and so on, uh, as well as travel all over the world and, and really spread uh, the message on Akita and the great things that we're doing and will do in the future. As for the AI superpower, um, I should have an answer for this, but I'm going to go with two. I'm flipping it here. Uh, I'm going to go with um, the ability to uh, uh, hear and process information in ways that I can't actually do it today. So leveraging that. And the second one is um, touch. Uh, the, the ability to feel vibration, winds, um, how they're flowing, and all the dynamics that are going on, going on around us that we're completely unaware of. I think um, having those two superpowers would, would just be, uh, would be really cool. Rob Telson, thank you so much for your time and we look forward to your next update. Yeah, Melissa, thank you so much and look forward to future conversations.